Okay, tapestry is exactly what it says. But you know, if, if you if you had an opportunity to see the bio tapestry, you would know that this story is told in thread and fabric. She was the, the, the person who was making the tapestry, played by Cecilia Salazar. And I'm given a stick figure drawing of the antebellum style giant hoop skirt and it's made out of brown cotton or muslin and um, decorated in all gold lace and everything is beautifully done except on this costume there must be no hanging threads everything must be neat out of that I will say out of all the bands I've worked on Santa Manite in 1989 and Tapestry those were the ones that I felt, okay, that, that's my input. That's my, here I am taking stick figures and being allowed, being given the, the, the liberty to have my input in somebody else's vision. In the arts, you don't get that a lot. You usually have one person saying, this is what I want and this is how it must be done. And yes, there are times and moments within working with the Calico company when, yes, there are rules that must be followed. But with Tapestry, like, I got to do so much more because I was allowed to. And that, that is just magic. That is magic come to life. What was different about Minchel? seemed is that the masqueraders had a, a different relationship with the with the experience of playing mass. There was a kind of seriousness in, in a good way um, to the, the whole endeavor. I think people came out really to embody whatever it was they, they were portraying. Minchel masqueraders were willing to put up with some pretty uncomfortable costumes. In red, I wore a leatherette outfit. <laughs> I think I think I lost five pounds <laughs> that year. <laughs> right. um, that year, in red, of course, you know, famously, some people carry chairs strapped to their backs. Uh, in years where it rained, we had to have all that fabric, kind of, you know, wet and heavy you know, to drag around. Um, tapestry, in particular, I remember. We had that's a lot of brown cotton. And brown cotton, you know, it probably triples in weight when it gets wet. But people were willing to put up with it. And at the end of the stage, people had their costumes intact. For tapestry, I worked um, in the mass camp as many many of us did over the years. That year in particular, they, there was just so much to do that I, I would go down and pitch in. And we, um, there were some masks we were making that were, were kind of studded with, you know, found objects. And, and I remember somebody saying, you know, nobody's going to see this from the distance that the people will be on the stage. And, and someone says, ah, but, you know, Lynchon will know. And someone cited the experience of Atlanta, the Olympics, 96 Olympics, of, of Exactly that, that when the costumes were being made, Minchel insisted that even though this thing was going to be on a huge stage, with, you know, the audience would, would have been at a distance where they couldn't have seen any details and certainly the television cameras wouldn't have picked things up, but he was very insistent that, that it mattered that things be well made and that the, you know, there was an attention to craft. So a level of commitment that you, you, you bought into when you were signing up to play with Mitchell.